Flame Core and Silver, Part 2. Soon, at the salt block, the owner of Ahabalusa's local watering hole trotted toward the, owner, toward the table in the corner, bouncing his head on a tray with several glasses of water and a salt block. He looked over at the occupants of the table as he got closer, particularly the two hedgehogs, two-tailed fox, and the baby dragon. He was a bit wary about letting those particular customers, especially the baby dragon, come into his establishment. But between Brayburn, Little Strongheart, and the Princesses of Equestria, or as I like to call them, the hangers-on, he wasn't really able to say no. The owner expertly transferred his tray from his head to the table, the glasses barely even shaking as the tray was set down. He then straightened up and said, There you go, folks. I use you, I can't introduce you boys in a little salt. You know, I'm just so glad that this is one of those fics that just allows itself to be a salt lick, and it doesn't try to say it's actually, <laughs> it's really bare, but we're not going to, because we're adults, so we're not going to do this whole entire kitty thing. We're made, we made alcohol. They just let it be salt. Something normal that horses lick. I approve of that. He was then answered with an announcement, no thanks, for Sonic, Silver, Tails, and Spike. The owner eyed him for a moment before adjusting his monocle and walking away. As he left to make sure none of the other customers were looking too much salt, he passed one of the horse drawn character drawers who had seen the group enter the salt block and wanted to sketch them, hopefully without them finding out. Back at the table, after Celestia and Luna, the hangers on, turned down the offer, Bray Pryor took the first look at the salt block. After savoring the flavor for a moment, he looked over at Sonic, Silver, Tails, and Spike, each one having a glass of water in front of them and asked, Are you sure you don't really want any salt? It's real fine, you know? Tails grinned weakly, Yeah, uh, believe me, Brayburn, we can tell just by looking at it, but I think we'll just stick with water. Brayburn shrugged, Are you say so, Tails? He took another look at the salt block. First, I looked across at the table at Silver and asked, So, um, Silver... Can you tell us what happened to you? If if you don't mind, that is. Silver replied, Yeah, I, I'll tell you all what happened, Frushai. Though I'm not entirely sure how old it started in the first place. Sonic asked, You didn't have an accident while you were trying to time travel, were you? Silver answered, No. Although I do have the means to time travel on me at the moment. What happened was, while I was in my proper time, I saw some kind of white light in the distance and went to investigate. Before I could even get close to what it was coming from, it suddenly spread out. I had to shield my eyes. Next thing I knew, I was standing in the middle of a ruined wasteland. Since I didn't know what else to do, I started searching for a sign, any sign of life. While I was searching, I found one of the Chaos Emeralds. Shortly afterwards, I was attacked by dragons, I think? All I know is they wanted the Chaos Emerald for a snack. Celestia provided, Gems are a delicacy among dragons, and Silver. Silver replied, well, I guess I kind of figured that, but eating something like a Chaos Emerald, who knows what that would do? He reached over and grabbed his glass of water with his right hand, taking a quick drink. Luna asked, So what did you do? Setting his glass down, Silver and answered, I told him I wasn't going to give it to him, but they went back off, so, instead of making things worse, I decided to leave before they decided to start a fight or something. While they were chasing me, I happened to come across Braper and Little Strongheart, Seeing as I won't willingly got them and fall to my mess, I held to get away from those dragons. Little Strongheart smiled. It was very brave and nice of you, Silver. You even helped us get till we had just met. Brayburn added, Why well, now, something those dragon fires turned out like? They were rude, but not last fall, clear. The baby dragon remained silent at that. Silver died. Yeah, but just after we got away, I heard a voice calling to me from a cave. When I went to investigate, I met this hedgehog who looked like a hedgehog named Shadow. Toy interjected, We met Shadow earlier. When you say he looked like him, what do you mean? Silver explained, Physically, he looked no different from Shadow. But where Shadow's fur is red, this guy's fur was pale blue. His eyes were a pale green. Actually, pale just about sums him up. He looked really pale all over. It was creepy. But I didn't want to turn him away based on what was alone, so I tried talking to him. And at some point while I was talking to him, I started feeling really strange. I still felt angry, fanciful way. 
different than I normally would. I was also fixing it on something called the Impulse Trigger. Tails said, He said Sonic was the Impulse Trigger, Silver. Twilight added, He said he was responsible for ruining the world. Silver placed his left hand on his head. Angling his head down as he replied, I know Twilight, and I know that's not true. Tails was right. The Ifrit was responsible for destroying my world, not this Impulse thing. And thanks to everybody's efforts, the Ifrit never escaped this dimension. So I returned to my time after I was defeated to find that the future had indeed changed. If there was still a threat to the future out there, I still don't see what I saw when I returned. That's why I don't understand where all this Impulse Trigger nonsense came from. Except I didn't start thinking of it until after I started talking to that hedgehog. Alzac said, so we all got to find what to go on is that there's a hedgehog that looks like Shadow out there who messes with your head. Is that what you're saying, Silver? Little Strongheart spoke up. Actually, there is one other thing. Everybody looked at her and her, she explained. Braveheart and I got worried after Silver went into the cave, so we followed him in. When we were outside the room where Silver was, we saw a shadow being cast on the wall outside of it. Rainbow asked, a shadow? Oh, you mean like Silver Shadow or that other hedgehog shadow, right? Or Shadow Shadow? Or Shadow Shadow Shadow! Or Shadow 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 Shadow! Or Shadow 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 Cupcake! Woo! Little Stronger said, Well, maybe Rainbow Dash. I mean, I've never been to Shadow Hedgehog, but what we saw extended over Silver Shadow and it did not look like him at all. Uh, Little Strongheart, can I just apologize for not adding you to False Starfleet even though I do like you? It's okay. The show writers apparently forgot forgot that Buffalo existed as well. Oh look, there's a school for where kids can learn how to be friends. Except for the Buffalo. Little Strongheart said, Well, maybe Rainbow Dash. I mean, I never met the Shadow Hedgehog. But what we saw extended over Silver Shadow and did not look like him at all. Braver and I, Later, well, sir. I wouldn't even know how to describe it, other than it looks was playing weird. Well, there was kids in that shadow looked all mismatched, like some straight out of a storybook or something. I don't know how else to describe it. Silver rubbed his chin with his left hand as he said, That's strange. I've never noticed that guy's shadow. I'm not even sure he had one when I saw him. Peter! Ooh, a mystery! I love mysteries, especially solving them. Someone crossed his arms and placed his head onto him before saying, Well, this is a mystery I sure like to solve. There was silence after that. Nobody quite sure what to say. Twilight, I'll be to release our detention in the air soon ask, So, can you tell us, Silver? What the future's like, I mean. Pinkie Pie grinned. Oh yeah, what's it like again, yeah, Silver? Is it super duper fun? Silver sat out straight, a smile on his face, apparently glad for the change of subject. Oh yeah, it's a great place. The sky is blue, the seasons change, everybody has a smile, and everybody can live the life they want to have. Spike that pan, that's exactly like the world now. Silver nodded, exactly. Sock grinned, hey I hear ya, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, right? Silver looked at him and nodded, yeah. Randy asked, but if the future is beautiful, then... What was that horrifying place we were just at? Tail spoke. It could have been part of an alternate timeline, Rarity. Not quite an alternate dimension like what the Afrique was settled in, but a different end result of what things might have been if they had been different. In this case, if the Impulse creature existed, considering what we experienced so far, it's not out of the question that the monster responsible for all of this is causing us to see not just what we know has happened, but also things that aren't or shouldn't have be set in stone. Rainbow looked at Twilight, remembering something in Tails' words, and asked, Hey, Twilight, did, did you get Sonic's his memories back? Can he or you at least tell us what that place was? Piggy noticed the sign Pegasus with a hoof, and when she turned to look at her, he go, <laughs> Oh, Dashie, you're so silly. We're already getting one last sheet. Do you want me to get you one, too? While Rainbow just looked at Piggy strangely, Rainbow looked at Sonic and Tails and asked, uh, what's this monster thing you're all talking about? Silver nodded. I was wondering that myself. Tails explained. It's some kind of creature that's managed to rip a hole between our universe and it's messing with time itself. 
You see the effects of its actions on the Al Palooza. Oh, you know, you got me saying it. And the whole town was completely white until just a little while ago. But the sky still hasn't returned to normal yet. And especially important is the fact that it still has some of our friends. Silver asked, Who? Who does it have? Sonic said, Well, we rescued most of them so far, but it still has a few. Like Blaze, for instance. Silver sized why and like at that. What? He stood up quickly, thought the palm of his head down on the table, shaking as he exclaimed, You're saying Blaze is a trouble? That's right, Silver. Go save your lady, Blaze! Don't you have a curse on Blaze? Yes, Trixie. But the Sylvage in me has to has to give up Blaze for Silver, so that way I could be happy with him with my ship. Sarg replied, Look, Silver, relax. I'm sure Blaze is fine. If anything, she's probably not able to move right now, just like everybody else we've rescued has been. He will spoke up. I can vouch for that. The snake did the same thing to me, Twilight, Spike, Applejack, Rarity, Fluttershy, and Pinkie Pie. We are all turned basically to stone by that monster and separated from our bodies. But once we are brought back to the white space point field now in habits, we turn back to normal. Sonic's right. The same thing probably happened to Blaze. As long as we go back to that place and find her, she'll be fine. Silver stopped leaning on the table and sat down, saying, All right, then. So you're saying that we have to go back to that place, find Blaze, take her back to this white world. She'll return to normal? Sonic shrugged, Exactly. Silver nodded, All right, then. I'm definitely going with you. Not just because Blaze could be there, it so totally is, but also because my psychokinesis could come in handy in a place like that. Rayburn asked, Y'all sure you won't go back to that place? You could stick around for a little while here and I help Alisa. Elzak looked at him and said, Rayburn, is that so sad, boy? Well, I'd love to see how things have changed since we were here last. We really don't have time. That monster messed things up at least as far as I Lisa here, and I don't really want to know what'll happen if we don't fix things soon. Besides, Apple Bloom was somehow affected by that thing too, and it still has Blink Magatosh. Rayburn's eyes wide. Blink Mike is trouble too? Well, that's just one more reason not to stick with y'all, then. Silver looked down and asked, What are you talking about, Brainburn? Brainburn looked down and grinned, You say it yourself, Silver. Don't you remember what you say? Silver looked confused at that, so Little Strongheart said, You called us your friend, Silver. You didn't leave us to the mercy of those dragons. It wouldn't be right not to return the favor and help you now. Silver gave a steepest grin as he replied, Oh yeah, I guess you got me there. He then looked at Sonic and asked, But how are we supposed to get back? The portal and the space time were both closed up, remember? Teal said, No problem. The barrier between locations is so weak right now, we can use our warp ring to warp right back there. He says he has a bridal warp ring, holding up so Silver could see it. Silver held a hand to his chin as he mused, A warp ring, huh? That's pretty handy. He didn't ask, can we use it now? Brainburn spoke up. Oh, wait, wait, hold on now. He bent over and gave another lick to the salt lock on the table before looking up and said, I don't want to use it, let the salt lick go to lice. Are you giving a matter of truth to face it? While standing up, Applejack said, Sir Brainburn, while you're doing that, I'm going to go out to the orchard and see how Bloomberg's doing. I'll miss y'all back here for a few minutes. So he did bow to the princesses, the hangers on, and let the salt block, Rainbow following her after doing the same. So I looked back at Brayburn, and then, seeing how much salt the airplane left, looked down his glass of water, knowing it's a little more than half full. I moved it towards Brayburn, saying, Here, you can have this, Brayburn. Later. The warp ring deposited everybody back on the plateau they had been on when the group ran to Brayburn and Little Strongheart, shortly before Silver attacked. They were back in the ruined world. They could get back to searching for their missing friends. The only question now was where to look for him. Please tell, does any pony have any suggestions or clues as to where we should start searching? I'm going to ask. Piggy started hopping up and down, waving a hoof she said, Ah, oh, peek, 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 peek. So let's see a turn and smile at her. All right, Piggy Pie, where do you suggest we go? Piggy pointed her hoof straight ahead, saying, Why don't we look in there? Everybody followed where her hoof was pointing. And many of them immediately started wondering what the pink pony was thinking. Does it have a volcano? Fluttershy meekly stirred. Teal said, Not exactly my first choice, but... He looked at Piggy Pie and asked, You really think so, Piggy? Piggy rapidly nodded her head. 
before anyone else could say anything, Sonic spoke. Now hold on, guys. Pinky may be onto something there. Twilight looked at him and asked, What makes you say that, Sonic? Sonic looked at her and said, Well, like you noted earlier, Twilight, the ground around here isn't exactly stable, even when we're not close to lava. It somehow manages to find a way to shoot up around out of the ground. As if on cue, a nearby pounce on the ground suddenly lit up, shot flames out of the ground. Everybody turned to watch it until the geyser had died down. After it did, Sonic turned towards Clues, saying, Silver and Braver and in the little Strongheart were out there in the wasteland. That might be a good place to look. But who knows how long it goes on. Or how long it'll take before everything starts to look like. We should probably exhaust all our options around here before going on out there. Silver said, Good point. Braver nod. Yep, yeah, I'll go fight. We get back to the volcano, he asked. Well, how are we going to get in there? Looks like all the lava is pouring out of that thing. Appletech agreed. Yep. I go by easy find a way on those slopes. Rainbow suggested, In that case, why don't we go in the easy way? You know, down to the top. Tails asked, Into the mouth of the volcano? Rainbow nodded. Tails placed a hand on the side of his face as he considered, Oh, if the investors let off a little, it would be possible to get inside without getting cooked. If there's still lava coming out, on the other hand. Rarity looked at Twilight and asked, Twilight, Donnie. You know that spell for creating force fields? How strong can you make them? Silver looked at her and asked, You can create force fields? Twilight looked at him and nodded. Yes, I could either create them for a single burst of magic, or I could keep challenging magical energy to it. The first method would require less work if the force field were to hold on to its own. If I had to recast a spell, it would be more tiring. The second method would mean I'd be connected to the force field at all times, but there'd be less chance that the force field could break under the stress. Everyone thought about her words for a moment, considering their options. They interrupted, however, when a familiar voice shouted, There you are! Silver merely whirled around, looked up, seeing three familiar, very angry dragons hovering a considerable distance near, above the plateau near the edge. Oh, for the love of, will you leave me alone? Silver yelled. So I looked at Silver and asked, Are those the dragons you mentioned earlier? Silver nodded, unfortunately. Fortunately, I didn't squeak in fear and just rolled her eyes, wondering why she see, even she should be scared of them. Simon Pegasus looked over Spike and asked, Hey Spike, aren't they the same? The baby dragon nodded, Yeah, I'm pretty sure they are. Purple dragon rose Spike and said, Hey look, Spike. The brown dragon added, Those dragons are his friends with some more. You know, the only reason I'm here and letting you three dragons live... Oh, what's their little Pegasus pony gonna do about it, huh? What's that, Bo? This, my dear Garble, is called... Elfbo. It is made in another dimension by elves. I was gifted to this during an archery contest when I was studying in Strixhaven. These are dragon slaying arrows. And as you can see, I have your name on it, your friend's name on it, and your other friend's name on it. I have been playing for this for a long time. So, the only reason why I'm letting you three live and not shortening this chapter by several pages worth of material, is because I found out that Blaze is going to kick your ass later! So, the only reason why you want us to live is to want us to suffer some more? <laughs> oh, hell yes! Do you think I actually care about you as characters? I don't even care to the fact that you're the big brother to that girl, stu that girl dragon student from the f student six. Quite frankly, I wish they had given the role to somebody else. Hell, I would have preferred it if we had Mina instead. So, right now, I'm going to let you live. But just be warned. I've already got Ofbo on. Oh, come on. We know you don't have Ofbo on. Oh, really? How do you know that? Well, isn't there some sort of magic word you have to say? Oh, you mean like swift death to those who wronged me? 
glow. Shit. Well, isn't this a cozy gathering? Tails asked. So what are you gonna do? Sonic said, ah, something tells me they're out here for a meet and greet. Sil replied, nope, they're here for a swap it, swipe and eat. Princess Luna looked at her sister and spoke, Shall we beat the living snot out of them, sister? She felt tugging on her legs looked at Spike. Please do, Luna. I mean, you called your sister an Abby Pammy Pony Princess and I heard him. He said, Luna tried her hardest to stop from a giggle, though she loved her older sister dearly. What Spike said was saying that these dragons had said about Celestia sounded hilarious. Toy spoke, They're coming closer. Who wants to own their asses? At that, everybody raised their hooves. However, while I'm still letting you three live, I'm still skipping the scene. What? I don't want them to run. I want a beatdown, damn it! For once in your life, Vic! Let's have the girls and Sonic, Tails, and Spike utterly own these three! What? It's not that hard! What's he doing? I'll show you! Earthquake! Yeah! And I like to call this little baby Sunbeam! Ow! Oh! Why did that pony let us in here? Gee, could it be that Turksy enjoys watching animals and defenseless idiots suffer? Oh, come on! You're out there in the audience! Please! Tell this reader to stop hurting us! You know, here's the thing. You guys don't even care. So they fly over the volcano. Pinky, being pinky. <laughs> this is fun! Go faster! She called. Silver grinds back on his eyes before facing four as he thought, Is she really enjoying this? Spikes in called. Look! Fire's raining down the volcano! Silver called back. I see it. The problem is, I don't think I could do about this much now. He didn't wince before adding, I don't know how much longer I can keep this up. So I called to him. Just hang on as long as you can, Silver. We'll make up the difference somehow. As he was speaking, he flew under the rate of fire, flaming rocks falling around them. Silver continued flying, managing to get mostly to the top of the volcano. Though they were still a short ways away from it, unfortunately, psychokinesis began to waver as the green glow surrounding everyone began to flicker like a dying light bulb. Seeing this, Sonic called back, Hey, Twilight! He didn't notice the flickering. Twilight knew that what Sonic was calling her for. She closed her eyes as the horn flared to life, letting go of Applejack's tail and held her legs out before everybody hanging on to behind her could say anything. A large force field formed around the whole group. Twice magic making him all float. Silver was so surprised he cut off his psychokinesis, surprised to find that he and everyone else was still floating without it. Celestia, who should be able to use her psycho abilities to levitate everybody, but chose not to because, God start it, we can't let the gods show what they're doing, and we're once again showing that they are, in fact, just hangers on. Turned to her sister, saying, No! Nah! The Lunar Princess nodded, and a moment later, they both hold their arms lit up, surrounding Twilight's force field. As everybody except Twilight watched, the force field began to move forward, heading up towards the volcano. Once at the top, he sent into the volcano's crater. Celestia and Luna can't see any of the flaming rocks launched up with their magic. After about a minute, the force field touched solid ground and popped like a bubble, everybody landing on their feet and hoes. Luna turned to Twilight a moment later and said, Fetting a pest is better luck, Twilight Spockham. Twilight Plus, thank you, Luna, but I had some help from you and Princess Celestia. You two deserve the credit, too. Celestia smiled. Nonsense, Twilight. The force field you created served safe passage to the volcano. Twilight glanced at the ground as he murmured, Well... Rainbow soon spoke up. Hey guys, we should probably keep moving. Those dragons can fly and take like hot places like this. Although, it seems like Lesenbringer is enjoying being a not out of them. <gasps> oh, come on, stop it! You will take us seriously! Buddy, <sighs> there are very few dragons in the world that I take seriously. 
However, you're not one of them. Excuse me, have you seen my son? Trixie, who's that at the door? Trixie will go check. Right? Slam! Legend? Yes, Trixie? Do you have a Dragon Slayer arrow with Thorax's name on it? No. Trixie, I'm not dumb enough to go against Thordak. I could probably handle a few wormlings perfectly fine, alone. Maybe with a good team, I could handle maybe a black dra dra adult black dragon. Maybe. But Thordak? No, <laughs> I'd be crazy. Thordak's out here. Uh, he's wondering if we've seen Garble. Um, okay, um, oh shit, they're all pretty, being pretty badly and unconscious. Okay, place walker ring, put them somewhere else. Uh, tell them they're, they're on vacation in the plane of fire. Right, right. We are dreadfully sorry, Mr. Sidiking, but it seems like your children are currently in the plane of fire. I see. Thank you. I'll make sure to quite spare your lives if I ever see your studio ever again. Phew. By the way, Trixie, did Thorax sound different to you? Trixie doesn't know, but it did feel a little painful to hear another voice coming out of him. There. There's my tribute to Lance Anderson. I hope you guys enjoyed. Silver Grown. And they still want my Chaos Emerald. No doubt they're going to come here. Now as I looked around, eyeing the various rock formations sticking out of the lava, as well as the multiple pathways leading to the other parts of the volcano. Well, which way should we go, y'all? She asked. Rainbow said, just pick one and go. Like, evidently. She pointed a hoof over a passage that was on the same rock formation they were on. Everybody shrugged and started moving towards it. They soon stopped when Teal spoke. Where's Fairy? Was he seeing the force field with us? Twilight glanced around and soon said, Spike's missing you too!